Redbird Arena. I'm Annie Costable alongside Lauren Dornbus for the 2A state championship matchup between Eureka and St. Joseph Ogden. A very evenly matched game we have going on here. Eureka beating Latin to get to this point. And on the other end, St. Joseph Ogden beat a very tough Altoff school. Both of the teams that they had to beat were very young compared to themselves. So we're looking forward to a more veteran matchup going on here in the 2A championship game. Keys to St. Joseph Ogden's win was obviously their outside hitter, Kylie Michael. Yes, Kylie Michael's already surpassed 1,200 kills so far this season. So definitely look for them to be going to her. Another key player for Eureka on the other end, very similar to Kylie Michael, is Lauren Roki, their outside hitter. Lauren Roki, yes, so she has 1,200 kills as well going into this. So it's a battle of the outside hitters today. A battle of the outside hitters means a battle on defense. Whichever team plays better defense is definitely going to walk away with a win. And the state title, Eureka, 30 years since this team has been at a state title championship game. And on the under, other end, excuse me, St. Joseph Ogden never winning a title game. So we definitely expect a battle on this court here. For Comcast Sportsnet, this is the 2A state championship game. The IHSA is achievement. Focus. Creativity. Spirit. Champions. The future plays here. The Illinois High School Association. Country Financial wants to know, what do you look for in a financial services partner? Get to know us and get to know what we need and what we want to do. Treat me like they would treat their family. Help us decide what is a want and what is a need. I want something tailor-made for me. At Country Financial, our goal is to take the time to get to know you and then help you put together a customized package of insurance and financial solutions to help you own your future. When someone really listens and they're planning for us, I trust them. Visit ownyourfuture.com to find a local Country Financial representative today. Today's championship matchup is brought to you by Country Financial. At Country Financial, we understand that helping you means knowing you. Take charge of owning your future with Country Financial. Call your local rep at 1-866-COUNTRY or visit ownyourfuture.com. Thank you. 
just joining us. Welcome into Redbird Arena, home of the Illinois State Redbirds. For those of you who've been with us, welcome back to Redbird Arena. We have a very exciting match coming to you right now for the 2A state title between Eureka and St. Joseph Ogden. We talked about this in our open. Two very evenly matched teams. Their attack game is what we're going to be watching today and how the, op the opposer defends that attack game. Kylie Michael for St. Joseph Ogden, a key player in today's match. We also have Parker Francisco, who was a key player in their win that got them to this point. For the Eureka Hornets, keep your eye on Lauren Brokey, their outside hitter headed to Moorhead State next season. We're just about underway here as number 15 for Eureka. Maddie McCunn steps back for the serve for the Hornets. And we're underway here. Parker Francisco on that one. That one failed out of bounds off of St. Joseph Ogden Spartans. First point goes to Eureka, and you're no stranger to the Illinois State Redbird Arena here yourself. No, I'm not. I, uh, I played here in college and then also coached here for two years as an assistant coach. But also note, Eureka is not far from Redbird Arena. This is kind of a home match for them with St. Joe Ogden not being too far down the road either, about an hour away. And we're seeing that in both of their teams' support behind each of their benches. Eureka actually across from their bench, a great visual for the Hornets to have directly across from them. And behind St. Joseph Ogden are all the Spartans out in support for their 2A possible state champs. They have never won a state championship. This would be the first in school history. Point to the Hornets. Two to one, Eureka Hornets. Number three for the Hornets. Courtney Heffron, daughter of Tracy Heffron, steps back for the serve. Great dig by number nine of the Hornets. Outside to number 23, Kylie Michael. Here's number seven, Lauren Roki, another key player of today's game. Yeah! Kylie Michael off the hands of Hornets. The point goes to the Spartans. We're all tied up here at two. Well, we talked about early at the beginning of the game, it's going to be a battle of the outside. So we have Kylie Michael on the outside for St. Joseph Ogden and Laura Roki on the outside for Eureka. But that comes with defense, so it's all gonna be who can get the best passes and who can defend these powerful outsides. Lauren Roki on the kill for the Hornets. This is gonna be a very back and forth game. I, like we mentioned in our open, these are two very, very evenly matched games. I don't see either team taking a substantial lead throughout this match today. Well, interestingly enough, Yesterday, both teams did not start their state appearance necessarily playing their best volleyball. St. Joe Ogden had uh, fell behind in the first set, as well as Eureka did too, but they both came back to win in three, winning those last two sets. Definitely, and the favored victors were definitely Eureka and St. Joseph Ogden yesterday. Like you mentioned, they both took it to three sets, not playing their best volleyball. But they're here today, and that's all that matters. Coach of the Eureka Hornets, Tracy Heffron, said the key to winning today is being aggressive and making sure that they block their outside hitter, Kylie Michael, of the Spartans well. We talked about her as well. We're going to talk about her all game long, an impressive player. And again, the key to getting a victory is defending those outside hitters. We just saw an impressive kill by Hornets outside hitter, Lauren Roki. Well, you watch her. Tracy Heffron, you're no stranger to Tracy Heffron. You guys know each other well. Uh, we played against, or excuse me, we coached. Our teams used to be, uh, Eureka used to be in the Corn Belt Conference before switching over recently to the heart of Illinois. So I had the chance and opportunity to coach against Tracy, and she's a class act over Eureka. Definitely a class act, has coached her team while her daughter is also on her team, sophomore Courtney Heffron. Just a sophomore, she has, she had a, Great day yesterday. That one sails out of bounds. Point goes to the Hornets, and they take a two-point lead here in the first set of the 2A state championship. Number 
seven, Lauren Roki steps back to serve for the Hornets. Well, if you watch Lauren Roki, she's in the back row now, but when she approaches, she has such a great vertical that allows her to see the court so well. And very powerful arm. Very, very powerful. Another powerful player, Kylie Michael, had her to Eastern Illinois next year. She gets the kill on that play. Stepping back, stepping back to serve is number four, Jana Mullen. St. Joseph Ogden coached by Abby McDonald, who in her career has 202 wins and 51 losses with the Spartans. A very, very impressive coach, has a ton of experience and has really coached her team well to a state championship, like we mentioned, their first in school history if they were to win today. Eureka getting the point there. Well, we talked about defense is going to be important on both teams, but that includes blocking. A lot of people think just digs, but blocking can really set the tone for a match. We saw a lot of great blocking yesterday. The front rows for both of these teams really gets up, and that's, like you said, important. It's not just about the digs. It's about their ability to block those kills. We take a timeout here. Eureka taking a timeout. They have a 9-5 to five lead on St. Joseph Ogden in the first set of the 2A state championship matchup. Well, and imagine on this side, St. Joe Ogden's just trying to get relaxed. You know, they, they had a couple points there, escape them with a couple errors, and then uh, Eureka setting the tone with the blocking. So it's a good time to regroup here, just let the teams relax. And, you know, luckily for them, they've both played here one game, so they're getting used to the effects of Redbird Arena. And just, it's different than playing in your high school gym. It's a stadium setting. There's the draft in the stadium. And it just takes a little bit getting used to, especially for setters. Setters seem to struggle, not struggle, but have to adjust more. Because when you're setting, all you're seeing is the fans. And all you're seeing uh, when you're trying to set that ball outside, it's hard to judge where those pins are. So definitely back to serve for the Hornets is number nine, Ashlyn Millett. Here's the set. Parker Francisco. Hornets get under it. Outside to Heffron. That one falls in the gap. Point goes to the Hornets. Heffron just a sophomore having a, a big impact on this Eureka team. Definitely, we mentioned as well, she's the coach's daughter. And just as a sophomore, you said it, she's had quite the impact, had quite the impact yesterday. Outside of Heffron, tapped over. That one sails out of bounds, point to St. Joseph Ogden. Actually, point to Eureka on that one, my, my mistake. Oh, was there a touch on that? There was a touch. Okay. Well, I think they're just as confused. <laughs> <laughs> the players are looking at each other and going, oh, we did get that. That's good. All right, point to Eureka. Number nine again, back to serve, Ashley Millett. Spartans unable to keep that in play. Point again to the Hornets. Maintaining composure is definitely going to be a key, another key to today's game. And like you said, they, they've both been exposed to the elements of Redbird Arena. Three sets for each of these teams yesterday. Well, I think in games two and three of the semifinals for both of these teams, we saw the, the most potential from them and why they are here in this championship game. It's really just unrattling those nerves and getting set in and just getting back to the play. Parker Francisco with the kill on that play point for the Spartans. Parker Francisco, Heffron underneath that one. Point to the Hornets. 13 to six lead for the Hornets here in the first set. Back to serve for the Hornets is number 15, Maddie McCunn. Kylie Michael underneath that one, though. Heffron, point goes to the Spartans. 
Well, and there's kind of an example there when it's hard to see just where those antennas are. And that ball was set a little outside for Heffern there, outside the antenna, and she hit it. Great dig by Parker Francisco. Kylie Michael on the outside. Spartans keep it alive. Kylie Michael again. That kill attributed to Kylie Michael of the Spartans. They cut the lead 13 to 8 here in the first set. Such a dynamic player, such power behind Kylie Michael. Well, that's something Eureka's going to have to focus on. I'm sure I'm sure Tracy and, and gang are, are paying attention to that, but just don't assume after one hit she's done. Definitely not. We saw that just there. Two back to back, and she gets the kill on the second. Out of bounds point will go to the Hornets. Hornets with a six point lead here in the first set. Back to serve is number three, Courtney Heffern. Hornets keep it in play. Tapped over. Kylie Michael, great defense by the Hornets. Hornets finishing that one with a point. And what a great set by Maddie McCann there. If you notice, the pass was really trailing into the net, and she was able to bring that ball back for the middle to be able to hit. Kylie Michael out of bounds this time. Hornets get the point. We're going to be very repetitive today, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Kylie Michael, Lauren Brokey. We'll be back with more of your 2A state championship action here on Comcast Sportsnet right after this. From the gridiron to the hardwood, on the links or on the track. On the diamond or on the ice. Go to prepfilms.com. It's easy. You can order your DVD online. At prepfilms.com, you make the memories. We'll make them last forever. The IHSA is competition. Teamwork. Integrity. Determination. Triumph. The future plays here. The Illinois High School Association. Welcome back to Redbird Arena. The Hornets of Eureka with an eight point lead here in the first set. We mentioned neither of these teams with a ton of experience at a state final. How much do you think that factors into the nerves and kind of excitement that maybe factor into little errors like that we just saw? Well, I do, I do think it balances everything out since these two teams uh, are both looking for their first state championship. Uh, the, the nerves are probably equal on that. Definitely. It gives it a little bit of a, a fairness that both of these teams a newness to the state final round. That one goes into the net. Points to the Hornets. Stepping back to serve is number eight for the Hornets. Haley Flowers, middle hitter. She's just a sophomore for Erika. Kylie Michael on the outside. Roki tips that one over. They keep it in play. Block. By the Spartans, front row. We talked about the blocking ability of both of these teams. They're going to need to see a lot of that if they want to defend the other's outside hitters. Yep, and that was a nice swing by Sarah Moore in there, who is actually headed to the University of Indiana Pokemon, you know, to continue her career. Kylie Michael on the kill for the Spartans. Eight-point game. Erika leads 18 to 10. Outside to Roki. That one's nailed down. Kylie Michael unable to get the dig there. Point to the Hornets. It's um, interesting seeing those two attack each other that way. Yeah, it is. <laughs> like we said, it's the battle of the outsides. And just to give reference there, 
uh, Kylie Michael was playing just a little below the 10 foot line there. So it just shows how much power Lauren Roki had there on that swing. And other outside hit hitters to mention, definitely Parker Francisco for the Spartans. She's a very dynamic player for St. Joseph Ogden. And on the other end, Courtney Heffron, who again is just a sophomore, but she's just as dynamic. And we're, we're definitely looking forward to see what she brings in the next few years. On the outside, that was Lauren Roki with the kill for Eureka. Yep, and Lauren Morky, or excuse me, Lauren Roki, as we mentioned earlier, is going to Moorhead State. But as you see, saw earlier, she went cross court and she went line on that one, so she's got a nice set of shots. Definitely, that she from. definitely. That one sailed out of bounds. Point to the Spartans. Back to serve is number two, Bree Trimble, sophomore for the Spartans. Well, we got a yellow card situation here because we have a, a look like a legal sub for a second or a delayed game. I'm not always oh, with the libero. So there is a rule that you have to wait until the ref sees the substitution for libero. That didn't occur. They had to stop the game, so it's a delay game yellow card for St. Joseph Ogden. Now serving for the Spartans is Jana Mullen. Attributed to number two, Haley Wiegen of the Hornets. Haley Wiegen is a senior as well, 5'10", middle hitter for the Hornets. Another dynamic player on this Eureka team. Well, it's good to see your middles getting involved. We talk about the outsides and how heavily loaded both teams are on the outsides and success, but you need your middles to be able to continue the game and make your outsides more available and open. Definitely another touch from the middle hitter there. Set to Parker Francisco, blocked by the Hornets. Parker Francisco comes again. Out to Courtney Heffron, into the net. Point will go to the Spartans. It's fun to see the fun that these players are having, despite you know an error on Courtney Heffron's part there. Her team supports her, laughs it off. They're here attempting to win a state championship. It's important that these girls have fun here. You're exactly right, and then many coaches say that you know once you get past, once you get in the final four, it's all icing on the cake, you know, for your season. But you're definitely eyeing a state championship here. Definitely. Parker Francisco tapped over by number 14, Danielle Britton. Great dig by number five, Sarah Morin. Outside to Parker Francisco, another great dig. Unable to keep it up, the Hornets will finish that one with a point. They're leading 22 to 13 here in the first set of the 2A state championship matchup. And Haley Flowers there picking up her first solo block of the game. You know, everyone talks about watching the attack game, but what's another interesting part is the blocking game, as we just saw on the left side there for the Hornets. The blocking game is, is just as exciting to watch a team who, with an exceptional blocking game as we know Erika and St. Joseph Ogden both have today. Well, it's also the first, first chance of getting in the hitter's head as far as being able to choose those shots. If you've blocked a player, are they going to be willing to go back there? So you're making them change their shots. And it's just that first chance to really defend the hitter. That one sells out of bounds point to the Spartans. Yeah, and you were an outside hitter yourself. When you got your kills blocked in that way, how much does it factor into your head and, and change your, your style of play, if at all? Well, I think it depends on the outside hitter you are. But if it's happening multiple times, you're going to try and make some adjustments. And that's when those errors come in because you're making those adjustments. But also, you have to have confidence about yourself being an outside hitter, knowing that you can hit the ball and get the kills for your team. Definitely, and I think both of these teams obviously having confidence in themselves, reaching this point in the state finals. Parker Francisco for the Spartans, back to serve. Kylie Michael. Outside. Great block by the Spartans, but unfortunately they tap it back over and it falls. Point goes to the home. 
Hornets. This could be a set point here, 24 to 15. Eureka with the lead as number three, Courtney Heffron, steps back to serve. Kylie Michael on the outside. Great dig. Attempted to keep it in play with number seven, Lauren Roki for the Hornets. They unfortunately couldn't keep it up. Point will go to the Spartans who are fighting back here in the first set. Stepping back to serve is number two, Bree Trimble. And you can probably guess who this is going. Oh no. Middle hitter. All right. That is set point, 25 to 16. St. Joseph Ogden takes the first set here in the 2A state championship. From the gridiron to the hardwood, on the links or on the track, on the diamond or on the ice, Go to prepfilms.com. It's easy. You can order your DVD online. At prepfilms.com, you make the memories. We'll make them last forever. Very exciting first set for the 2A state championship between St. Joseph Ogden and the Yorito Hornets. We expected it to be a little bit closer than it was. The final score, 25 to 16. Two exceptional outside hitters, and Kylie Michael of the Spartans and Lauren Roki of the Hornets. Roki finished the first set with five kills, Michael with six. So we've seen a lot of back and forth between both of these teams' attack game in the first set. Here comes the second set, and St. Joseph Ogden's motto this season has been to rise as one. So being down one set here in the state championship, I definitely think we can expect them to rise as one here in the second set coming up. Well, and the story of the first game was just the hitting percentages. Eureka was hitting 324 and St. Joseph Ogden hitting 0 .050. So that's probably unusual for St. Joseph Ogden. We expect to see more success hitting. At the same time, I think Eureka has had more of a team, um, everybody contributing to that success there. What do you think contributes to that hitting percentage and how can St. Joseph Ogden here improve upon that in the second set? Well, the hitting percentage is based on how many attempts, how many errors, and then how many kills. So either your errors need to be lower uh, with not so many attempts, but you're gonna have the attempts in the game. Well, on the serve was Andrea Corsi. She's committed to play softball here at Illinois State next season. Good start there for St. Joseph Ogden. Definitely great start for St. Joseph Ogden and the Spartans getting a 1-0 to zero lead here in the second set. Rise as one. They're definitely going to need to rise as one in the second set. Bring it to a third if they want a chance at the state title. Point to the Hornets as number three, Courtney Heffron, steps back for the serve. by the Eureka Hornets. Spartans able to get that one back over and it falls. St. Joseph Ogden, Spartans get the point. And Haley Flowers there trying to use her foot, which is legal in a game of volleyball, but she had already backed off the of net and touched it twice. Stepping back to serve is Parker Francisco, another impressive outside hitter for the Spartans. Great dig. Kill by number eight of the Hornets, Haley Flowers, their middle hitter. Flowers is just a sophomore, so both of these teams you're seeing right now are a little bit more veteran than the 2A third place matchup teams. It's exciting to see veteran teams, but also have key underclassmen contributors that kill for the Spartans. Gives them a one point lead here, three to two in the second set. Well, and it's nice to see that both teams are involved in their middles a little bit more, but be, to be able to involve in those, you have to have good passing, and that has got to start from serve receive, which we've seen Eureka's been able to do. Great 
great kill by the outside hitter for the Hornets. Back to serve is Sarah Morin again headed to Indiana Kokomo next season to play volleyball. It's exciting to see where these girls are headed next year. They have the ability to play further their career and play at the college level. It's definitely not easy to play college athletics, and we have a lot of future college stars on the court here today. It is, and if you think about how the school population is too, and, and how many of these kids are going Division One, Division Two, II, Division Three, um, with such small enrollments, it really says a lot about the program and their training and athleticism. Impressive block again by the front row of the Eureka Hornets. Two point lead for the Hornets here in the second set. They're doing a great job of defending Kylie Michael. It's important for the Spartans and Kylie Michael to stay involved, not get discouraged. And we just saw it there. She's not getting discouraged. She's, she's keeping her game strong and she just got a kill out of it. Yeah, I was just going to point out though the blocks. So Eureka has had. Eight blocks so far with St. Joseph Ogden, zero. And that's not really their game plan right now. You know, they want to get the blocks and put pressure on Eureka's offense. That one tipped over by number two of the Hornets, Haley Wiegand. <laughs> on the kill, but that sails out of bounds, point to the Hornets. Well, it's good to see her staying aggressive, though. The line shot is the hardest to defend in volleyball, so the fact that she's trying to swing, trying to find ways to get kills is really encouraging for the St. Joe Spartans. Tipped. Kylie Michael gets the kill, Spartans get the point. Michael steps back for the serve here. Been a new school record of over a thousand kills, 1,199 to be exact. I'm sure she has more than that after this weekend's game so far. 367 kills on the season. Really a stunning player on the court. Well, and she's had a lot of help along the way from great passes to great sets to get there. Definitely great passes from Andrea Corsi, their senior setter. Total of 745 assists on the season. She'll be again playing softball here at Illinois State next season. A little bit of a fake there by number 21, Sarah Acklin. Parker Francisco. Courtney Heffern, that one sails out of bounds, point to the Spartans. We see the Spartans keeping this in one point game right now. A lot of that has to do with the passing from their libero, Bree Trimble. She has been passing nails so far at this beginning of the second set. Great dig by, I believe that's number 18, Sydney Kelso for the Spartans. Kylie Michael on the kill, point to St. Joseph Oscar, no, excuse me. That was point to the Hornets, number 15. Maddie McCann steps back to serve. Parker Francisco tipped, point goes to the Spartans. They're fighting in this, in this second set here, keeping it a one point game like you mentioned. Well, we're seeing a little bit. They're having success along the net. They're getting some more touches on the hit, so I expect this to be a close second set. That one, so out of bounds, point to the Hornets. <laughs> Courtney Heffern to serve. Great dig by Kylie Michael. Tipped over, kept alive by the Spartans. Kylie Michael taps it over to the outside. Roki unable to get the save. Roki on the kill for the Eureka Hornets. Point 
to the Hornets. Here in the second set, Eureka with an 11 to 8 lead of the 2A state championship title game. We will be right back for more 2A state championship action on Comcast Sportsnet. Country Financial wants to know, do you feel in control of your financial future? Uh, no. <sighs> sort of. But I, I have the desire um, to be in control of my money. I need a plan. At Country Financial, our goal is to work with you to lay out a step-by-step -step plan of insurance and financial solutions to help you regain control of your financial planning, to help you own your future. Understanding is empowering. Visit ownyourfuture.com to find a local Country Financial representative today. Back at Redbird Arena at Illinois State University, home of the Redbirds, we have an exciting 2A state championship matchup between the Eureka Hornets and St. Joseph Ogden Spartans. That one took out of bounds. Point goes to the Spartans, but the Hornets took the first set in a fashion that we didn't expect to see. They, they pulled away with the lead, and the Spartans never quite could battle back. Here we're seeing a little bit of a difference. Closer match, closer set, excuse me. Two-point lead by the Hornets. They now extend it to three points on that kill from Lauren Roki. You're absolutely right, Haley, but they still have to find a way to either slow down or stop Lauren Roki from Eureka. We expected to see a battle between Kylie Michael and Lauren Roki, and at this point in the game, Roki is definitely appearing as the stronger player here. The Spartans not doing a great job of blocking Roki and the Hornets attack game. That one goes out of bounds, points to the Hornets. Well, and those are tough misses too. You bring yourself into two, within two points and you have a service error. So for St. Joseph Ogden right now, they really just need to settle down, get a good pass and get a kill. Great dig by Number nine there, Ashley Millett. Outside to Kylie Michael. Millett able to save it. Roki taps it over. Kylie Michael on the outside. Point to the Spartans, excuse me, Kylie Michael with the kill there. Falls just in bounds. Roki on the outside. Kept alive. Michael taps it over. And the Hornets keep it alive now. Outside to Michael. With the kill, Spartan. Kylie, Michael. It's a one point game here in the second set. Like you said, they just need to slow it down, get their attack game moving again. And that's exactly what they did, bringing it now within a making it, excuse me, a one-point game here in the second set outside the Roki. And this is the game we expected to see right here. You have, you have Roki hit for Eureka kill right after Michaels had taken it down the line for the kill. I guess the Spartans just had a few jitters they needed to shake up, but this is de definitely the game we expected to see between these two players, or teams, excuse me. Great block by the front row of the Spartans. That's something that has been lacking here thus far in the game. They got it going. Let's see if they could keep it going and battle back in this game. Still a one-point game here in the second set. Michael on the serve. Into the net. It's tough to see errors like that in a game like this. It is because those points really add up. We've seen two service errors by St. Joseph Ogden. They have a short few, 10 points. And that's, that's a tight game right there. Outside to Parker Francisco. Heffron. Michael gets the dig. Spartans keep it alive. Bit of an error there by the Hornets results in a point for the Spartans. 
still a one-point game here, 15 to 14 Hornets lead. Yeah, just a little bit of miscommunication there. I think Haley Flowers from Eureka was going in, but she wasn't expecting the ball. She was expecting to go elsewhere, I think. Heffron. Saved by Michael. Dig by number five, Sarah Morin. To the outside, Parker Francisco. Points for the Spartans. That's one, that one is touched by the Hornets. Number four. Excuse me, Jana Mullen stepping back to serve. We have a tie game here in the second set. exciting to see the power behind that sophomore player. Well, if you watch St. Joseph Ogden, they're having a difficult time defending because when um, Eureka Warren Roki's hitting, she's hitting sharp cross, which means their defense has to adjust on the court. When Heffern's hitting, she's hitting that deep cross, so it's really hard as a defender to dig that because you don't know exactly where to go, and each time they're hitting, it's a little bit different. And on the opposing end, to have that arsenal on your offense, two separate type of hitters with just the same amount of power, it definitely attributes to the number of wins and the reason why they're here today. Tie game 16-16. Outside of Parker Francisco, into the net. Point will go to the Eureka Hornets. Courtney Heffern back to serve. Great kill by the Spartans, this time is number 20, Abby Burnett, who's just a junior, six foot junior for the Spartans. I think the Spartans definitely need to add a few more um, attack players to, to their attacking here. We see a lot from Kylie Michael, Parker Francisco, and now Abby Burnett need to get more involved. Great play over there. Nice try to save the ball by Eureka. That's a really good ball volleys between these two teams. Here. Both teams battling like they're playing for a state championship or something. Parker Francisco <laughs> on the serve. Great block by the front row of the Spartans. That's Kylie Michael and number nine, Kate Bigger, middle hitter. As you look at these two teams, you know, for so much of this set, Eureka's been winning, and now St. Joe Ogden's taking that lead. So if you're Tracy Heffern, it's about getting back to basics, get that pass back, take one point at a time. And if you're St. Joe Ogden, you're looking to get that 20, get to 20. 20 points is a big part of this game to 25. Definitely. Speaking to Coach Heffern before today's game, she said that if they get down, the key is to just remain balanced, know what they're capable of, and maintain composure. And I assume that's what they're talking about in their huddle over there. And on the other end, we have the, the Spartans, who I'm sure they're talking about maintaining this strength that they've come to. They don't want to let this lead go. Two-point lead here in the second set. They need to force a third if they want to become state champions for the first time, may we mention, in school history. On the serve, Parker Francisco. Rokey taps that one over. Outside to Kylie Michael. Heffern able to dig that one out. Rokey, powerful. Outside again to Kylie Michael. Another great dig by the Hornets. Lock game there. Here comes Roki. Outside again to Kylie Michael. Oh, they said Kylie Michael was in the net for that kill. So it went with that to Eureka. We saw her visibly upset with herself on that play. But again, she's had an amazing game thus far. She can't get down on herself now. Her team needs her dynamic play to stay in, stay in this match. Great dig by Heffron. Kylie Michael. Tipped. Soars out of bounds. Kill goes to Kylie Michael. And the Spartans, they hit that 
20 mark you were mentioning earlier. Two point lead, 20 to 18. St. Joseph Ogden in the second set. Well, when you hit that 20 point mark, it's five points to the game. And those are the most crucial five points, obviously, but it's kind of a reset. You know, we've got 20, we only have five more points to go. Keep that focus. Here comes Kylie Michael. That one's unfortunately out of bounds by Kylie Michael. One point game, 20 to 19. Man, this is an exciting state <laughs> championship matchup. This is exactly what we expected to see from both of these teams. It's a battle here on the Redbird Arena Court. I'm sure you remember some battles like this. Yes, there's been a lot of good games played here. I was paying attention to see what happened. Was that hit? I don't, that looks one. like it's St. Joe Ogden. Ogden point, I believe it was, it was marked in. Okay. Roki. Point to the Spartans. Three point lead for the Spartans here as Arrico will call a time out. Maintaining composure. They're trying to maintain composure over there, the Hornets. Coach Heffron needs to gather her team together, tell them they're not out of this just yet. They won the first set by maintaining the momentum. They just need to get back to the first set and, and their dynamic there in the first set to come back and, and tie this game up and try and try and win the second set here. I agree, and this isn't undoable here for the Eureka Hornets. St. Joe Ogden obviously having the lead, but it's just as hard defending your serve. And I've talked about that in other games, but defending your serve is the hardest thing, I think, in the game of volleyball because you're allowing the other team to serve, serve receive, and set up a kill first. So the toughest thing you can do is defend your serve, but it's the most important thing to do to keep this game going. Definitely. We also talked about, you know, whichever team is able to gain the momentum and keep the momentum is most likely going to win, and we see that in the St. Joseph Ogden Spartans right now. Hopefully, are attempting to take it to a third set. Back to serve is number 18 for the Spartans, Sydney Kelso. There's that spot again in the middle back between the libero, Lee Tremble, and it's just hard to defend. She's got a great swing. Set outside to Kylie Michael. Tips point will go to the Spartans. Well, Eureka's had a lot of st success blocking today. Got a little over aggressive there, and ended up in the net, costing the Hornets one point. That's tough because, like you said, it's all about being aggressive, and unfortunately, too aggressive, you end up in the net, and like we just saw, a point for the Spartans. Great block by the Spartans. 24 to 20, possible set point here. Kylie Michael back to serve. Pretty fitting that Michael is now serving the set point here. The Rico Hornets doing a great job of defending it. They get the ball back and the point. 24 to 21 here in the second set. Well, both teams have their big guns in the back row right now, so this is all about the other team members that have made this game possible here. Definitely. Whichever team. Oh, amazing kill by the sophomore, Courtney Heffron. Like you said, in that back row, that's where the Spartans are having a tough time defending the gap back there. The Hornets keep knocking it down right to that spot. Courtney Heffron on the kill on that play. Point goes to the Hornets, and it's now a two-point game, 24-22. St. Joseph Ogden maintains their lead, but the Hornets are battling back. Yes, they are. And, you know, this is a good timeout for the St. Joseph Ogden. Just to kind of reset, we have one point to go before Eureka has two points to go to tie it to the game. So just a good timeout there, just let them regroup. And it also gives Eureka, though, the strategy of what they're going to do in this next play. Definitely. It's great to see, too, the teams gather on the court the way they are. St. Joseph Ogden meeting in the middle. They definitely know what they're capable of. A great team atmosphere as Coach 
has um, the coach over there has mentioned um, they're a very united team and I'm sure that's what they were talking about as they met on the court there outside to Parker Francisco great block by the Hornets Kylie Michael Kylie Michael with the save unfortunately the Spartans are not able to save it it's now a one point game Parker Francisco on the outside. Heffron, Michael with the save. Michael taps it over. Communication seems to be a, an, a mistake right now for, for the Spartans, not communicating very well. Kylie Michael. Hornets keep it in play. Tap it over. Outside, Kylie Michael. Great volley here going back and forth. Kylie Michael into the net. Point goes to the Hornets, and we have a tie game. 24 apiece, and we can hear the Hornets fan base turn behind us. So exciting to see the fans supporting the team the way that they are back then. Well, this is a crucial point here because this really sets the momentum when we're going into a match point again. takes the lead 25 to 24. Parker Francisco on the outside into the net. Wow, what a comeback. That what was. a comeback by the Eureka Hornets. And they are your 2A state champions. I don't think anyone could have predicted that comeback by the Eureka Hornets. Man, what a game. Hornets win it in two sets. Second set, 26 to 24. The Hornets pull out the victory. We'll be right back to wrap up this 2A state championship coverage on Comcast Sportsnet. The IHSA is motivation, effort, innovation. Community. The future plays here. The Illinois High School Association. From the gridiron to the hardwood, on the links or on the track, on the diamond or on the ice. Go to prepfilms.com. It's easy. You can order your DVD online. At prepfilms.com, you make the memories. We'll make them last forever. Today's championship matchup is brought to you by Country Financial. At Country Financial, we understand that helping you means knowing you. Take charge of owning your future with Country Financial. Call your local rep at 1-866-COUNTRY or visit ownyourfuture.com. Welcome back. We're going to send it over to Laura Dornbos, who's standing by with Tracy Heffron and Country Financial Player of the Game, number seven, Lauren Rokey. Annie, I am here with the state champions for 2A Volleyball. Is that still sound a little oh weird word. to you? It sure does. I'm like, we are number one. I just, I'm so excited for these girls. They're amazing. Just an amazing group of girls. Well, tell me, Tracy, when you guys were down 22-24 in the set, what did you tell your team? I just said we got to keep fighting. We've been down before and we've come back. And, you know, these girls are so resilient in what they do. There's a lot of leadership on the floor, a lot of experience, and that definitely showed today in our comeback. Well, you definitely have a high-powered offense starting one with Lauren Rokey, the senior outside. Lauren, what did you think was the difference in that match? Oh, I think it was our offense and our defense. Um, we were very scrappy that match. We didn't really let anything hit the floor. Um, everyone just wanted it really bad. I think that was a huge factor in it. So at the beginning of the season, and Coach Tracy's talking to you, did this come up as you guys are going to be state champions? 
Um, yeah, we, we kind of thought of it. Like, this was our goal all season. Coach asked us what our goals were for this season, one of them being state champions and one of them being undefeated, which hadn't happened, but it doesn't really matter. But, yeah. And, Coach, I have one last question for you. How do you think the conference changed help you prepare for today's match? You know, moving into uh, the HOI conference definitely was um, a good thing for us. Obviously, we were able to play all different aspects of the game, which um, with the uh, Corn Belt, they're a tough school, but um, coming down to 2A, it's kind of a variety of play. So it was kind of nice for us to ha get prepared for that. And I can't go without mentioning a famous baseball player from your town, and I'm sure that you guys have been rallying behind them, but what a great year for the town of Eureka with the Cubs uh, home town of Ben Zorbis and now the state champions of 2A Volleyball. You know what? I think Ben kind of led the way for us. It was kind of exciting, you know, um, just from him being the MVP of the World Series and then us being able to come out here. I mean, I think Eureka is just on a very big high right now. We're in cloud nine. <laughs> well, great job and congratulations again on your championship. Thank you. Thanks so much, Laura. We will be right back for the post-game wrap-up here on Comcast Sportsnet. Country Financial wants to know, what do you look for in a financial services partner? Get to know us and get to know what we need and what we want to do. Treat me like they would treat their family. Help us decide what is a want and what is a need. I want something tailor-made for me. At Country Financial, our goal is to take the time to get to know you and then help you put together a customized package of insurance and financial solutions to help you own your future. When someone really listens and they're planning for us, I trust them. Visit ownyourfuture.com to find a local Country Financial representative today. What an ending to the 2A state championship matchup between St. Joseph Ogden and the Eureka Hornets. Hornets pulling out the victory in two sets, 25 to 16 in the first, 26 to 24 in the second. Their first state title, 30 years since they've been to the state finals. We are going to throw it to the PA announcer for the trophy presentation here at Redbird Arena. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, please meet the Spartans of St. Joseph Ogden, who finished the 2016 season in second place with a final record of 31 wins and four losses. First, meet the superintendent of St. Joseph High School, Brian Brooks. Number eight, Andrea Canis. Number nine, Kate Bigger. Number 15, Sarah Sanders. Number 18, Sydney.
will, the, will Coach Abby McDonald and the captains of St. Joseph Ogden High School please step forward to receive the second place trophy. And now let's meet your 2A state champions, the Hornets of Eureka, who finished the 2016 season in first place with a final record of 35 wins, four losses. First, meet the superintendent of Eureka High School, Robert Bardwell. Principal Richard Wehrle. Now, let's meet the coaches. Head coach, Tracy Hepburn. Assistant coach, Lena Donner. Assistant coach, Jamie Roth. And assistant coach, Nicole Underwood. Introducing the players, number one, McKenna Ott. Number two, Hallie Wiegan. Number three, Courtney Heffron. Number five, Sarah Morin. Number six, Ariana Hopplesorn. Number seven, Lauren Roki. Number eight, Haley Flowers. Number nine, Ashlyn Millet. Number 11, Brianna Fogo. Number 13, Maddie Steinbeck. Number 14, Danielle Britton. And number 15, Maddie McCunn. And manager, Katie Underwood. Well, Coach Tracy Heffron and the captains of Eureka High School, please step forward to receive the first place trophy in the state of Illinois, your 2A champions 2016. Another big congratulations to the Hornets of Eureka pulling out the victory in two sets. We'll be right back with more state coverage on Comcast Sports Center. Country Financial wants to know, do you feel in control of your financial future? Uh, no. <sighs> sort of. But I, I have the desire um, to be in control of my money. I need a plan. At Country Financial, our goal is to work with you to lay out a step-by-step -step plan of insurance and financial solutions to help you regain control of your financial planning, to help you own your future. Understanding is empowering. Visit ownyourfuture.com to find a local Country Financial representative today. Welcome back to Redbird Arena here in Normal, Illinois, where you all just witnessed an exceptional match between the Hornets of Eureka and the Spartans of St. Joseph Ogden for the 2A state championship. Eureka coming away with the win there, and it definitely was a battle between the outside hitters, Kylie Michael of St. Joseph Ogden and Lauren Roki for the Hornets. We welcome back Laura here with us today. Laura, you can talk about this too. The difference in this match definitely was the 
the defense. It was, and it came down to who can defend the outside hitters the most. And the game ended on a block, and you know blocking is de defense in its own way. It's very fitting that the winning point came from a block by number eight, Haley Flowers, as we mentioned. This game was all about defense, and the Hornets did a better job defending the attack game. This is Eureka's first championship, and we'd like to congratulate them on that. From Redbird Arena for Laura Dornbos, I'm Annie Costable. You're watching state finals action on Comcast Sportsnet.